in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support rich or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. What the? I don't have a doorbell on this thing, do I? Huh. Pink robot. Greetings, doodle. You know, out of everyone who appear in my videos, you were like... The second to last commentator I'd expect to show up in one of my videos? Who would be lower than that? Yeah, you know, probably a live action commentator like Blaze or Dan Stein. Y you know, people who would be really, really hard to work with based on their. Y you know what? Maybe you're like third from the bottom on that list. Point being, not very high up. To be expected, you sent in an order for a house robot, correct? Did I? I don't recall anything like that. I don't typically ask for manual labor. I wonder who could have ordered you. Man, I can't wait for my pink trademark robot trademark to come in the mail. I can't wait to do all the cool things with her. Like, uh, ride a unicycle or break my hip while riding a unicycle. All of our mockery aside, do you perchance have a deconstruction you are working on as of present? Well, I mean, I got a few. Any of these cross your fancy? This seems like a strikingly substandard deconstruction of a user who is purely using text. It seems mainly made for entertainment purposes, but I feel like it could make for a quite delightful deconstruction. I didn't take you for the type to gravitate towards something like this. There often appears to be a lot of things about me the denizens in the slideshow commentary community seem to wish to know, so I'm not entirely struck as shocked. Touché. So today we'll be covering a commentator by the username Professor Mediocre who did a commentary on Steve the Unknown Nerd's commentary on a story by Elimation who ranted pretty heavily about an abusive ex-boyfriend she once had when she was 15. For those who pay attention, the latter video made my worst of the year list, so obviously we're not out here defending Steve's gross video about Elimation. Let me make that abundantly clear. Furthermore, considering I know I'm gonna get asked in the comments about it, I would highly suggest not going on an unnecessary tirade about something unrelated for this commentary. This commentary is already going to be lengthy enough, so we do not really require an excess preemptive addressing of superfluous content. I... fine. I'll save that for my final thoughts then. In any case, we'll be primarily focusing on Mediocre's video, less so on Steve's. But if you want more of my thoughts on that one, I do have a countdown that effectively covers the entire video. So let's get started. Holy shit! I've I've been gone for a, quite a little bit, actually. You know, I was actually going to make a video yesterday, but... Long story short, the remake of Resident Evil 2 threw a wrench in those plans. Oh my god, if it isn't the mystical commentary fairy, what video have you brought upon me tonight? Doodle's a fairy now? Hey, there's a lot of things that I am. I don't believe fairy is one of them. That's what they all say at first. <laughs> Fuck your privacy. Fuck your privacy. <laughs> This is bad. This video is fucking bad. Just have have I been? I think I've only been gone for a few weeks. But have I been? Has was that long enough for the commentary community to somehow devolve into a shittier state than it are than it's already in? Hey, chief. One individual lackluster commentator does not a bad community make. Let's not inadvertently drag everyone else into their standards of quality. Perhaps they meant it in a hyperbolic way. All right. I can play with this hypothetical then, because, yeah, you might be right, there may be some level of hyperbole within his intro. I can believe it. But given what we'll see later, it's kind of difficult to decipher given that his tone sounds... Well, not monotone, but as consistent as something text-to-speech. I resent that statement. I figured you would. Well, of course. You don't just approach a woman like that and call her a derogatory slur, now, do you? We're literally getting people who are somehow less- who have somehow less editing in their videos than Drew Pickles as swell. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the guy and all, but- <laughs> His videos weren't exactly the most complex on the block. 
I want to point out the irony of him using gameplay of Street Fighter being even lazier than your average commentator. I resent that statement. I can't empathize, I'm afraid. Just... why? No, this person... this person doesn't even have... <laughs> he doesn't even have a voice! Drew Pickles had the audacity to use Spiconia. Th this person can't even be fucked to do that. I mean... shit man, perhaps they don't have a microphone. Perhaps this individual wishes to stay anonymous. Perhaps, you know, they don't particularly like the sound of their voice and don't want to put it on their videos. Fuck, there could be numerous other things that makes a person want to fall into just doing something text-based. Also, before you go ahead and bring up Pink or myself as examples of what more Steve can do instead of text, let me be clear. Yes, he could use text-to-speech or a voice changer. There are valid fixes for those who like watching YouTube in the background. Like, I'm not saying that Steve's production couldn't use a bit of work. However, what I will argue is the purpose behind Steve's use of text might not exclusively fall under laziness. Inherently, a commentator at least puts at least a modicum of effort on the basis of writing a script, as the text itself works as an indirect form of keeping your thoughts and counterpoints organized in some fashion, and while no, the individual in question does not counter elimination with correct points, the aspect of a script writing can at least be applied to Steve himself, whilst I question your own production list. Just, why? I wish I had a criteria- if I were in YouTube, <laughs> dumbasses like these would be off the platform immediately. Oh, good to know. So, you would limit the people that could actually create content on the site because you- don't personally appreciate it. You would have to have some fundamental criteria, one of them being an, having an actual voice in your videos. What about instrumental based music videos? What about casual gameplay videos? Or what about Pokemon ASMR, which is a real thing, by the way? I could have gone this commentary without learning about this knowledge. But yeah, to circumvent this, because I'm more than willing to bet that people do, uh, like me, people play video games while listening to videos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless all of you with the power of text-to-speech, because I don't want, I, I don't want you looking at my gameplay. Uh, but yeah, let, let's, let's do this thing. We're gonna be looking at a few videos from this guy named Steve the Unknown Nerd, or whatever the fuck his name is. God, this, this guy is so forgettable. I already forgot what his name was. Write a script, please. Or at least some bullet points to what you have to say. Because for someone who wants to get on Steve's case for laziness, forgetting what your target's name is sure as hell not helping your own case for moral superiority. And in case you want to clarify that this was indeed a joke, that's fine. But your joke sucks because you remembered the fact that he's called Steve the Unknown Nerd. Is he really that forgettable when you remember his name? Though we should probably avoid basing our points on hypocrisy for every point. Yo, calm down. This only makes what? Twice so far? Thrice. So yeah, the, the first video we're gonna be looking at is his video on Lily Mations. Wow, it's... It's, it's fucking bad. And if you're wondering why Doodle Tones was in the intro of the little skit thing, uh, that's because she made a pretty good video on a Steve the Unknown Nerd. It's 40 minutes long, but she practically ass blasted him. And the only reason I put my avatar in there is because I think I'm uh, I'm ass blasting him too. Why is this still going? I was promised a commentary after last interjection. Yeah, and we were both promised more than one video in this commentary, but thankfully we're only just getting the one on Illimation. Also, I guess while I'm thinking about it, he says my video on Steve is 40 minutes long, yet he links to an hour long commentary in his description. I'm just gonna let that sit there. Nitpicking, are we? Well, look, he's giving us basically nothing of substance for now three minutes, and like, God, why did we need to know why you use Devil May Cry footage with the self-imposed me on the Virgil? It's just so unnecessary. Uh, so yeah, check out the commentary Doodle Tones made on Steve. Uh, it'll be linked in the description, and yeah, it's actually, it's pretty good. So yeah, let's get right into it. Hi everyone, my name is Steve the Unknown Nerd. So welcome to my first commentary, so today I'll be covering Illumations, how I met my abusive ex-boyfriend, so let's begin skipping a lot. Ah oh, yeah, Steve, I, I am positive you're gonna make more commentaries in the future. Just ignore the fact that you haven't uploaded within two to three months. I, I am more 
I am more than willing to assume that you're gonna upload more. Is your first point of contention really contingent on when he last uploaded a video as of your own? Because never mind the fact that you chose to lob this point towards Steve's first commentary, the one after which he went on to release at least four, one of which was within the day of the very one you're covering. I'd also like to point out the irony of Steve releasing yet another video on me a month after this video. I mean, yeah, this really wouldn't have affected Mediocre's point in this video, but it's just really funny to me. But returning to my point, not only is it incorrect to use this critique on a video to which predates a time frame that would be required to be present for this critique to work, but it's also superfluous to the discussion, as Steve just making the claim that he wishes to make more videos doesn't invite a discussion of whether or not he winds up doing so, as the desire would still be within Steve's consciousness. But, okay. Here's the thing. I originally thought, here was my little uh, hypothesis, if you will. I thought, I just thought, I had a hunch that, uh, what, what's his name? Steve the Unknown Nerd is a troll. Look at this setup. Are you kidding me? This seems like the type of person who would want to parody shitty commentary channels. You, let's see. You got, you got copywritten character. I resent that statement. I do too, actually. Like, yo, Professor, you did acknowledge my video on Steve earlier, correct? A video where I used a copywritten character not once, but twice in one video? Like, you've seen my typical avatar in the form of Elizabeth. You used her in your intro twice. But then you also say that my video on Steve was good despite the fact that I used a couple of anime avatars. Furthermore, taking a commentary avatar into consideration whilst critiquing their work only goes to production and no further. It doesn't inherently indicate a troll, it doesn't invalidate any claims made by the individual. There's nothing particularly notable about a commentary avatar not being original other than if you were critiquing a visual presentation. And even then there are arguments that can be made, but enough about ImageGate. Is something, which is something that Doodle Tones and a few other people do. And congrats, you blow a hole in your assumption. This is why writing your thoughts down beforehand is important. As given how you begun your hypothesis, you explained to us a detail of how you arrived at the presumption that you did regarding the nature of Steve's content, that detail being his use of a copyrighted character before acknowledging the amount of other commentators who do the same, which gives the viewer a pre-notion that these other commentators are also under that same descriptor. I hate how unintentionally generalizy he is. It's, like, actually bugging me. Would you believe me if I made a statement regarding how this is not going to get any less unpleasant? It's just, there, there are some, a few things here. There are a few things here. But I just can't, I just can't pinpoint them. Just, this seems like the parody. Doodle, do you require medical assistance? I don't believe I'm programmed for that, I'm afraid. No. No, I don't think I need medical help. Internal screaming isn't diagnosable. You would be surprised. So you mean to tell me that you believe Steve is a parody for mostly indiscernible reasons, but also the fact that he uses a copywritten character? Bruh. Script already. At this point, it's actively hurting your point as you're giving us something against Steve that you immediately backtrack on. Well, maybe not backtrack, but throw off course at the very least. Doodle's use of irony aside, I too would like to bring up a different choice of questioning, considering you are going into this video under the presumption that Steve is not serious and is only looking to parody a slideshow commentator with vague at best reasoning, why are you then covering this video with the phrasing that you gave us on the opening statements, particularly the ones regarding the current state of the slideshow commentary community, would Steve being a troll invalidate the quote unquote, downward spiral of the commentary community by this standard? as if he's not being serious and is instead giving us a satire of sorts to the typical cliches we see in normal deconstructions, then that's an individual showing their own distaste for certain aspects of the formula. Well yeah, he did start with the, oh, the CC has lowered its standards all because of this parody account used to make fun of shitty commentators. Good job. <laughs> I and mean, not even a good parody at that. It's just something. Oh wow, this is so shitty. I can't. I can't tell if it's real or fake. Either that or my autism's getting in the way. 
Please stop backpedaling, that bike can't take it anymore. So within one interjection, you give us a theory regarding the nature of Steve's videos. Tell us that you believe the inherent nature is satirical with your reasoning being vague and unfinished, to put it in layman's terms. Then, you go back on that by explaining that it's not even a good satire of, and I quote, shitty commentary channels to prevent this criticism from seeming half-hearted or otherwise contradictory to your video, though without further reasoning as to why Steve's parody is substandard at best, before going back on that entirely, explaining to us that you cannot decipher whether or not it is a satire, which attenuates the aforementioned theory you had regarding Steve's purpose. That's not mentioning how redundant this makes your interjection in whole. As with everything all said and done, what did you even say? What point did you make that wasn't just absolutely fruitless in your own disjointed ramblings? Well, once again, kids, this is why you write scripts. Fuck your privacy! Fuck your privacy! Girl thoughts and apples to oranges comparison is one guy, and you have 1.31m subs, and 11 mil people saw this video so a bit unfair. Okay, this might seem like an extra, like borderline fucking crazy thing to say, but I feel like if Lil- I didn't watch the original video. Smooth. But if Lily actually did use the guy's real name and like real info, that guy got what he was that guy got what he was coming to him. Actually, what was Illimation's initial point? All I recall hearing was, fuck your privacy. So, we do get to see some screenshots within Illimation's original upload. A lot of them are very messed up and pretty scathing. However, one thing that Illy did not do was drop anything past his first name. Literally, all we know is that her ex-boyfriend's name is Harris. However, that's not Steve's point at the end of the day. Steve's point is that Illimation is using these screenshots between her and Harris as a way to expose him. And this straw man that Illy brought up would have a point regarding respecting his privacy. That sounds quite vacuous. Yes. Yes, it is. Because Illy's point isn't exactly comparing her situation to showing these screenshots between her and Harris. Illy is using her experience to say that she no longer cares about Harris's privacy because he was invasive to her at 15. So, like... Yeah, Steve's point isn't exactly on the nose in that department either, it's in fact very dismissive of what she has to say regarding the situation. In that sense though, Professor Mediocre's point isn't really addressing the situation either, because while yes, Harris definitely deserves a definite amount of authoritative punishment in regards to attempting to solicit child pornography, Steve's argument against Illimation's point is purely in regards to whether or not she should be comparing her experiences to using these screenshots. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, Harris is a total fuckhead, I don't think anyone rational will contest that. But when you're arguing a point that has nothing to do with the initial talking point, it's best you don't try to argue using the original talking point, as unfortunately that disconnects your own argument from the discussion. At least not without addressing how out of touch the initial argument is. I also want to go back to an initial sidetrack regarding the context we see from Illimation's original video. We only hear the ending phrase to the point and not what the actual point is in of itself. I understand you do not wish to pad out your video with superfluous elements that would push your video over the 10 minute mark, but it's quite easy to miss what the argument is about when you shorten the context to its incoherent elements. Oh yeah, that's not gonna get any better either. Just. If he actually did all the stuff that gathered in these that are gathered in these clips that I've seen, yeah, he fucking deserves it. Because people like sexual harassers or other uh, criminals and crooks, they don't deserve to have their info safe. I get what you're trying to say, but once again, I'm not sure I like the overgeneralization that's given. Now even I'm bewildered as to what you may mean by that. Well. Weed is still illegal in a lot of places, but I'm not sure I'm comfortable with the idea of the professor here saying that it's okay to effectively dox stoners. And if we wanted to go further down the slippery slope, God help you if you ever sing happy birthday in a public space. Again, I get what he was trying to say, like, child predators shouldn't have that right to privacy. Whatever. Fine. But just to say crooks and criminals like that makes a lot of questions run through my head. Has anyone ever informed you that you are indeed an unorthodox individual with an absurd brain pattern? Yeah, actually. Uh, about seven different times this past month. I exact wording, too. Like, alright, well, let's... <laughs> oh, you might be saying, Well, Kobe, what do you, your dad's a criminal, wouldn't you want to dump his info? I'd say, yeah, but I want to keep my identity a secret. Uh, I, I wouldn't- I wouldn't wanna... 
be doxxed uh, by my own stupidity. That's a rabbit hole I don't think I want to go down. I concur. Uh, but yeah. If she did, Lily had every single right to dump his info because he's such a piece of shit. What an edit! We're also still awaiting for a valid and logical argument to have been made. What is wrong with you? Are you crazy? Do you have any idea how that makes me feel as your boyfriend? That you think I'm a- It's sad that you actually have the audacity to monetize a video on a serious topic blah 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 gay shit that doesn't matter. <sighs> That's... That's gross. One practice that I don't particularly support is regarding the practice of changing the narrative of text to suit one's own purpose, not to oust my collaborative partner here, but one thing that frustrated me often in her early work was her tendency to completely repurpose the video from the ground up to match a certain stylization and momentum, as we could have never been certain that what was read aloud to us in the original post's text was meticulous or faithful enough to what the initial uploader had in their video and it could muddy the discussion being had, especially to a listener of said video who is not able to read the screen, such as yourself. Yeah, actually, didn't you say that you didn't want to have to read your video because you often listen to videos in the background while you play video games? Would it have not crossed your mind at all that purposely taking out Steve's argument would confuse someone who would be doing the exact same thing? It's even worse here because you just chose to completely ignore what he's saying for the purposes of calling it pointless when half of his argument was taken out after that. Steve was getting onto Ellie's case for monetizing this due to the fact she censored the word pedophile. This to Steve says that she was only really in it for a quick cash grab and not actually using this platform with this audience to help those who might fall under the same potential situation. Which, no, isn't right because you can do both and in fact Ellie is giving the end of her video, she states that she wanted to use said video as a cautionary tale to those who might have fallen under the same situation. I want to warn others, especially those watching who are as young as I was. So she obviously had that more in mind. Regardless, with what you gave us in context, a person who was listening would only get the first part of the point about the fact that the video was monetized to begin with, and not why Steve would have a problem with it. Which you're going to continue to argue against, because of course you are. Okay, this might seem like another crazy thing to say, but uh, Steve, I don't think you have the right to tell people, hey, you shouldn't monetize this, because uh, Lily is telling her own story, her own uh, events that happened. And since it's hers, it was her event, and... <laughs> Much like every other person on this website who wants to who wants to make a quick dolan, she, she has the right to do it. I mean, yeah, I can see why you think it's fucked up for her to do it, but I don't know. I don't care if she did it. I don't care if she did do it. Okay, on premise, I want to say that I agree, and I do. Ellie should be able to monetize her content. However... This doesn't do much to the discussion, because not only do you A, acknowledge that you understand where Steve is coming from and see why he thinks it's kinda messed up that Illy would monetize a, such a conversation, which feels uh, counterintuitive to your Steve, you don't have the right to tell people what they can and can't monetize mantra, considering what Steve is doing is calling it messed up, so why should he not be allowed to say something that's messed up when even you do so yourself, and B, does nothing to Steve's argument as you're literally not addressing the second half of that very same point that you chose to remove from the context like a fucking champion. Steve's entire point here is solely focused on shining a light on how Illy's motivation to do her video is not genuine in wanting to help people who could fall under the same situation. Like, he's not even saying she can't monetize the video, but that it's sad she's doing so because it doesn't seem like she wants to help. In general, Steve isn't arguing the idea that Illimation cannot monetize her video. He does bring up how the video is obviously monetized, but given the interjection was placed after Illimation censored the word pedophile, it appears his main point of contention is contingent on the censorship itself being in the video, in hiding an important word to Illimation's story. Furthermore, to say that you don't care whether or not Illimation monetized the video doesn't change how Steve obviously does take issue with it and had she not done it, this conversation would not have begun on the premise of the censorship not being there. I'm just saying, since it was her story, since it happened to her, she has every right to monetize it whether, uh, uh, if she wants to. Because like, I'm just saying, if you had a really big event in your life, and if... Oh, fuck. Smooth. If you... 
ugh, if you had a really big event in your life, and you had the audience that Lily does, the you, you'd probably monetize it. I, I'm more than willing to go out on a limb and say you would monetize it too. How would you know that though? Steve is fortunately not in the situation where he has hundreds of thousands of viewers to his content, so we genuinely could not know whether your hypothetical is accurate or not. Well, I mean, a hypothetical by nature is not technically accurate, but even then, this claim is still unsubstantiated and is literally only here to excuse something that Steve's not even saying Illy can't do. You don't get to say that to me, and millions of other young children who- You're listening to fucking CNN, wow, anyway, I'm ending here, this is Steve the Gigantic. Faggot signing out. Wow! Y you know what I really love in commentators? How they really, how they really just don't even have the audacity to finish a point they were trying to make. Citation required. Yeah, we're back to your point over generalizing a topic in a frustratingly stupid way as if it's common for commentators to make a point without any elaboration. But isn't it though? Where's your evidence? Point taken. Like, I can point to a few commentators who, like them or not, at least elaborate on their points in a way that doesn't mirror what Steve did with his Wow, you're listening to CNN point? That said, while I can also give some examples of the contrary, they're few and far between, and it's not my job to present your point for you. It's like, oh my god, th this part was like, so shitty, I'm leaving, it's not worth my time. Just like, th this person is probably the bottom of the barrel example of shitty commentators. No voice, just leaves when he feels like it, because, huh, I'm too good for this. This video, this, I, I'm not gonna explain my points, you guys can gather it. As abrupt of a note as Steve's video concludes on, he wasn't using this point as an inducement to condescend Illy out of the discussion, he was mildly patronizing within the point itself, I can concede, but with the wording of anyway in there, we can't presume that Steve's intention to drop the rest of the video at the moment he did was to extend his supercilious tone into his concluding statements. Yeah, nothing wrong with wanting to just end the video if you have nothing more to say. Perhaps Steve just didn't feel like the rest of Illy's video was commentary material, so he just fucked off to the next one. It happens. Especially with the likes of what is known in this community as one-shot commentaries. Those are just one point at a video. Steve's was effectively a three-shot. These things happen, especially when Steve even states he's going to be skipping around a lot at the very tail beginning of the video. Yeah. Hamburger. Th this video is too... Yeah, <laughs> Christ, it isn't even two minutes long, it's one minute and 35 seconds, and it, half of the video is Lily's video. Yeah, and what's wrong with half of Steve's video being Illy's video? Come on, finish your point, commentator. Just, wow, talk about extremely shitty video making. Professor, did it ever occur to you while you were recording for this video, because we can all tell you didn't script anything, that you not elaborating on why Steve's video editing quality is low given the issues you have with it, would lead to a miserable level of ironic hypocrisy, to utilize your own line of logic against you, it's almost as if you are expecting us to already agree with your given statement about Steve's overall quality preemptive to your video that you don't feel the requirement to further elaborate on your own statements. This doesn't work. Like, dude, I won't even fight you on the idea that Steve's point is unfinished at best. Hell, I made that same point against it within my own worst of the year list last year, so if anyone is on your side, it would be me. Furthered by that aforementioned hour-long commentary on Steve you brought up earlier, so I get it. It's infuriating hearing him just come in and make a drive-by statement like, Oh, wow, you listen to CNN? But then you just persist with calling him a bad content creator because of the length of his video and the fact he uses text instead of a voice. Like, what? I don't even see that as an inherent level of quality or lack thereof. I do think what with Steve's refusal to listen, his gross overt bias against those he covers and his agenda pushing that even follows his third video on me definitely makes me look at him in a more negative light. But it's not just how the thing is edited or how short it is that lead me to believe this idea. Well, the final video we're going to be looking at is a video titled, To My Fans. <laughs> Hi everyone, Steve the Unknown Nerd here. To all my fans, yes, I'm going to be responding to Doodle's video. But for now, goodbye and fuck you all. Thanks for the views. Lol, 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 lol. God, I am... I fucking refuse to believe that this person has a single, single fan. 
uh, let's see. It bas- it's basically just, uh, hey, <laughs> hey everyone, I'm making a video on doodle tones. Even though I'm probably gonna get my ass handed to me, I'm still going into this like a fucking retard. Uh, are we for reals out here doing this? You act like it's particularly that complicated to cover a doodle video, or even that it's that rare or problematic that someone does. Yeah, I'm not that hard to cover. Grant you a month later we find that, no, Steve's video contains a lot of problems. Problems that I might decide to go on and address. But regardless, it's not the fact that he wants to cover me that's the problem with that video. It's everything else, you know, the attempted lynch mob up death threats, the blatant misgendering, the blatant grammatical mistakes and saying he should just kill yourselves. You know, everything you chose to remove from the context. See you all in nine... <laughs> I'm Cybershell. See you all in nine years with the Sonic 3 bonus video. <laughs> God, that's a fucking retarded reference. But th this dude is probably going to be the Cybershell of the commentary community. He's going to... I wish in the com in the description he would have said, "Hey everybody, hey everybody, Steve the faggot here. And I'll see you all in nine years with my Doodle Tones bonus video. Sayonara, fuckers, and thanks for the views." Then Steve releases his video a month later and neutralizes this one. My approbations cannot be described using words in purely the English language. Anyway, Professor Mediocre continues to call commentaries retarded, and that's it. Final thoughts. Pink, if you may. In the simplest way that I can put this, this video deteriorated rather rapidly due to your innate lack of introversion, considering how many of your own criticisms of Steve's work are applicable to your own. The misfortune of your duplicity astounds me on a level that isn't quite easily describable. My sincerest critique begins and ends in script writing, as a lot of these problems could have been avoided with one laid out amongst your view, perhaps retakes with your vocals as well, as not only would that avoid the problems of you eructating into your microphone in a rather unpleasant display, but also so you have the foresight to revoke any imprudent statements that opposes your own beliefs. Yeah, generally just write out a script and maybe you won't fall into the hilarious pitfalls of you contradicting yourself, or worse yet, overgeneralizing into making your own point move. Like, Steve's video isn't good, it made my worst of the year list for a reason. But like, you're just going on all these pointless side tangents and it doesn't really do anything against Steve's video. Anyway, we're done. Uh, now what? Well, personally I figured I would just move on to write my own Steve the Unknown Nerd commentary, so I shall leave your premises and allow you to do whatever you normal commentators do after a collaborative effort, au revoir. Well, that went better than expected. Doodle, did you perhaps order a second robot around here? No, it's just Pink Robot. She's another commentator entirely. So, she is her own robot? Mm. Yeah, generally, she's free to do whatever, I guess. I don't... Doodle, I request more robotic rights around here. Oh, uh, uh about that. We'll discuss it later. For now, I, I, I got a video to... I could, um, we could put, wear, put on tiny hats. She could, um, she, she could insult me on my lack of a significant lexicon. Um... We could, uh, uh, have funny robot kids that we adopt, like in the movie Robots. You ever seen Robots? We'll do that. Except she's not my wife, so I don't want to be presumptuous and an idiot. Uh, man, I can't wait to do all these cool things with my pink robot when she gets here, like, uh... Ride the train. Eat some sushi. Fornicate. <laughs> We're not gonna fornicate. <laughs> I can't wait to do all the cool things with my pink robot when she gets here. Like, drink a smoothie. Go on a walk. Take out the garbage. Clean room. I'm just gonna keep going until, like, I have enough things to work with. <laughs> Um, can't wait to, I, I can't wait for my pink robot to be in the mail. Can't wait. We can go on Twitter. We can proclaim that we live together now. And then we can orchestrate all the drama we want. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I can't wait 
for my pink robot to come in the mail. Um, we're gonna do so many cool things, like uh, we're gonna watch, we're gonna make an abridged series. It's gonna be like House of the Dead. Um, I'll be the gun, she'll be the zombies. It's gonna be sick, man. It's gonna be really cool. I can't wait for my pink robot to get in the mail so we can uh, make our uh, High School of the Dead Abridged series where I'm the right tit and she's the left tit. Is this enough? I'm just gonna send this to you and see what happens.